combinations of numbers that add up to 100. But in a relationship, if it's not 50-50, it won't amount to anything. When you share a major part of your life with someone, it's easy to take them for granted. And unless an effort is made to consider the other person's feelings, the result can be a disaster. And that's what our story's about on this episode of Still the Beaver. bag of slugs with him. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, Mom. Hi, Freddy. I see my paternal role model is fashionably late again. Shall I call the usual places? No, thank you, sweetheart. We already have. I think you better go feed that snake. This morning he wrapped himself around the vacuum cleaner. Uh, do we have any more fresh frogs? No, but there's some frozen ones in the freezer behind the yogurt push-up. All right, thanks. Honey, do you think you'd better call the restaurant and push the reservations back another hour? Oh, no need. When I called at 10 o'clock, they said the dinner crowd was beginning to thin out. Oh, I feel so bad about this. Maybe we should just take a rain check. No. Well, Eddie, you really smeared that guy. He never had a chance. Yeah, by the last game, the chump didn't even know which end of the pool cue to chalk. <laughs> the only tricky part was dodging the pool balls on the way out of the parking lot. <laughs> hey, look, the gang's all here. And you should have been here hours ago. Fine, what happened? The snake cornered the cat again? Edward, we had dinner reservations at the Blue Room tonight. How could you forget that? Oh, he didn't forget. He was on a hot streak and... Yeah. Hey, check this out. I want some Yahoo's pool cue. Genuine ivory. Been in the family for years. Eddie, you are always forgetting, and I'm getting sick and tired of it. Angel, sweetie, I know I get off track now and then, but don't I always make it up to you? Like when I forgot your birthday. 
I promised to take you to some swanky dinner joint. Eddie, that was supposed to be tonight. Excuse me, I hate to be a party pooper, but uh, I have an early morning mom aerobics class, so we're just... Hey, so... cool your heels. This will all blow over in just a minute. You know how her Irish temper is. Eddie, I'm not Irish. So what's your excuse? <laughs> Edward, don't try to change the subject here. You let us sit here twiddling our thumbs while you are having fun playing pool. Hey, pool is not fun. It's hard work. You are, are the most inconsiderate man I've ever met. Inconsiderate? This pool cue is going to be a gift for you. A and you're also cheap. Hey, now that hurts. Give me one example of how I'm cheap. All right. You won't let me buy a new couch. Hey, what's the big deal about new? My parents had the same couch for 25 years. I know, that's it. Uh, we'll have to do this again sometime. Yeah. Hey, Wally, sit on this couch. Now tell me if you don't think that's comfy. Eddie, I've been making excuses for you for 15 years, and I'm, I'm not going to do it anymore. Now, we are going to go to the blue room without you. Wally, Mary Ellen, let's go. Sure, that's all right. You're upset. I don't have to go. Hey, uh, bring me back a New York steak. Well done. I mean, gorgeous. And don't order mine until your food comes, so it'll be warm when you get home. Eddie, you don't understand. When I get back, you better not be here. Sure. And, and this time, I mean it. What a kidder. <laughs> Please, no more. You're spoiling me. Eat up, Eddie. You've been through a lot. Yeah, I guess you're right. I never did get my dinner last night. Uh. Oh, Mrs. Cleaver, would it be any trouble to heat up the syrup again? <laughs> Not at all, Eddie. Oh, and uh, a little more coffee, please. <laughs> I can't believe that guy. He ate all the crisp parts of the bacon and left us with nothing but fat. That's nothing. He switched pillows on me and I woke up with the old cushion dad took to the football game. Dad, yeah. can we ask you a favor? Sure, guys. Could you throw Mr. Haskell out? Boy, please be a little patient with Eddie. He's having a tough time while he and Mrs. Haskell try to work things out. But, Dad, that creep is... No, Oliver, don't call him a creep. Right now he's our guest. Okay, but our guest is wearing your bathrobe. That creep. <laughs> nice robe, Eddie. Yeah. Bye, Grandma. Wait a minute. I'll get your lunches. Hey, whoa. Aren't you little tykes going to say goodbye to your Uncle Eddie? Hey, where'd you guys split? a little math drill, like I always do with Freddy. You got any money? <laughs> ah, great. See, now this is called liar's poker. Your serial numbers are your cards. Okay, now you start. What do you got? Sure, three. Not with my kids, Eddie. Dad, my dollar? All right. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'll trade you. This is a really good dollar for liar's poker. Come on, boy. Bye, guys. Have a nice day. Thanks, sir. Bye, Dad. Bye, Dad. Eddie, uh, I'll play you. A masochist. Great. You start, loser. Three fours. Three eights. Four sevens. I challenge. I won. I can't believe it. I outboxed the fox. It's not so fast, Felix. That was your dollar. I found it in your robe. <laughs>
get it? Hey, Freddy, what are you doing here? She throw you out too? Yeah, me casa es tu casa. Actually, sir, you might say I've come in the role of Goodwill Ambassador. Yeah, she finally cracked, huh? Didn't have the nerve to come over here and throw herself at my feet, so she sent you. Well, the truth be told, sir, Mom doesn't know I'm here. Huh? Well, I took it upon myself to seek a quick settlement for fear that any more time spent alone would only strengthen her resolve. Son, I refuse to grovel. Even if I were lonely, miserable, and desperate, and I'm not, I would never grovel. I see your point, sir. It's foolish, but I admire your integrity. You know, I take that as a compliment. Listen, Frederick, I'm sorry that you've become a pawn in this game, but I want to assure you that I won't allow it to affect the well-above-average relationship that you and I share. Thanks for the reassurance, sir. Perhaps it's a weekend, Father. You'll see fit to take me to the zoo. Son, I'll take you to the horse races. You'll see animals in their natural habitat. <laughs> Honey, turn it out. Dad, how come you're putting a yellow light bulb out here? Well, honey, because the uh, yellow light keeps the bugs away. Why don't you put them in the house where the bugs spider? Well, I guess it's just my sense of fair play. <laughs> Hi, Wally. Hi, Eddie. Hi, Mr. Haskell. Hey, Kelly. How'd you like to run down to the corner for a double dip chocolate cone? Great. Hey, here's a couple of bucks. Get something for yourself while you're down there. <laughs> so, Eddie, how's the exile going? Eh, just fine. Hey, look, um, I hope you understand about not being able to stay at my place. But, uh, a vote's a vote. Hey, I know Mary Ellen's probably siding with the enemy, but how'd you break the one-one tie? It was two-nothing. Come on, don't take it so hard. Hey, I tell you what, I'll treat you to a movie tonight. Thanks, Wally. But you don't have to babysit me. I'm a free man. Look out, ladies. Eddie Haskell is back in circulation. It's gonna be like throwing raw meat into a shark tank. How could she do this to me? Because you're a creep. <laughs> Obnoxious, irresponsible, and insincere. And you treat her like garbage. Hey, that's beside the point. Don't you see I'm miserable? You gotta do something. Make her take me back. Please. I'd like to, Eddie, but this is between you and Gert. Hey, you gotta help. You're my best friend. I tell that to Lumpy, too, but I don't mean it. <laughs> hey, I'll even pay you for your time. Cash so you don't have to report it. Eddie. Don't give you a freebie. Just tell her to give me one more chance. She's the only woman who ever really loved me. Can you imagine anyone else who would? You got a point there. Look, I'll do whatever she wants. I'll change. Tell her that, please. All right, Eddie. After dinner, I'll go over and talk to Gert. You're a real pal. Hey, you want to stick around and eat with us? What are you having? Lasagna. Yeah, forget it. Your mom's making steaks. <laughs> this is going to be easy. That's only nine good reasons. I asked for ten. All right. You know how he's always telling every woman what a lovely dress she's wearing. Come on, that's harmless. He just does that to make people feel good. Well, he's never said it to me. Just once, I'd like to hear it. Well, surely Eddie must have his good points, too. Yeah. He can fix the plumbing around the house. <laughs> well, I know there's some other things. I wrote them down once. Gert, he loves you. He loves himself more. Eddie will promise to take me out, and then Lumpy will stop by with tickets to the wrestling matches, and Eddie's gone. Gee, they never invite me. Every time we save enough money for a new couch, he'll buy himself a leather jacket or go on a fishing trip with the guys. What guys? 
He didn't invite me to that either. He even does it to you, one of his best friends. You know, I am his best friend. And that's why I came by tonight. To ask what it would take for you to give him one last chance. Well, he'd have to totally change. He'd have to be a completely different person that just happens to look like Eddie. Kurt, I honestly believe Eddie would do anything to save his family. So come on, please. Come over to dinner tomorrow night. See for yourself. Wally, I appreciate what you're trying to do, but I just can't see him right now. I'm sorry. Okay, Gert. I understand. If you change your mind, let me know. I will. Wally, thanks. I wonder when those guys went fishing. <laughs> what do you say, Mom? Dad's a lovable old rogue. Let's say we give him another chance. The sink stopped up. <laughs> well, maybe one dinner wouldn't hurt. Mom, he won't regret this. Cut it out, Katie. You're so jealous. big lecture about being on our best behavior tonight. Yeah, that even checked to make sure I match my socks. They must really want to get rid of Mr. Haskell. Hey! Why aren't you kids wearing ties? What do you think this is, a hayride? Oh, hi, kids. Eddie? Mrs. Cleaver, uh, I was just commending the boys on their wardrobe selection. You don't look too bad yourself, Eddie. Oh, well... It's a big night for me. How come you didn't dress up? Eddie, your wife's coming over, not mine. Oh, right. I I'm sorry. I guess I'm just a little nervous. Oh, you don't have to be, Eddie. We're all pulling for you. I have no idea how hard we're all pulling for you. <laughs> That's her feet. I don't want to appear too anxious. Let her sweat it out a few minutes. Good evening, sir. Son. Son. Son, look at you. You've grown since I've last seen you. Oh, well, come on, sir. It's scientifically Im Gert. Hi, Eddie. Hi, Gert. My, that's a, a lovely dress you're wearing. Thank you, Eddie. Good to see you, too. Then you'll take me back. Don't push it. Hi, Gert. Hi. Come on in. Eddie. Everything's ready. Hi, Gert. <laughs> Socks for nothing. Freddie, I think your dad did pretty good during dinner. Yeah, my mom even let him hold her hand under the table. The girl really has to like a boy before she'll let him hold her hand. Now, how would you know that, Kelly? We've got cable TV. I knew what was going on down there. They always kick the kids out at the critical part of the evening. Well, there is a way. But it's kind of sneaky. And I promise not to do it anymore. I wouldn't want you to break your word. <laughs> they crack! No, they're just playing charades. Charades? It's a game they play in the Depression because people couldn't afford to go to the movies. What's the Depression? Something our grandparents made up, so they wouldn't have to buy stuff that we want. Bye -bye, no. The blue uh, mask. How many words? Two? Hey, wait a minute. No time. Lion. Superman. It's a flying thing. It's, uh... Yeah, it's Iron the Mighty. Oh, 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 Mikhail's baby joins the Air Force. No. No, 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 Oh, you're up next. Oh, come on. Your oh, turn. Isn't she wonderful? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know. All right, all right, all right. Um, a movie. Okay, a movie. movie. And a book. A movie and a book. Three, Three words. words. 
second word. Uh, second word. Second word is uh, something awful. Yeah, something uh, really disgusting. A grotesque, hideous monster. Your mother. <laughs> Such a kidder. Oh, she is a. Kurt! Kurt! Thank you all for a lovely evening. Kurt! Bye, Eddie. Kurt, let me in, please. Forget it, Eddie. I thought you really changed, but you haven't. Kurt, I was doing great for hours. I'm sorry, I got off one good one. What's that compared to what we have together? <laughs> Remember the first time we ever went out? Oh, how can I forget? I never expected to see you again after I filled out that police report. <laughs> then you kept writing and calling and having pizzas delivered. Remember the heart-shaped one for Valentine's Day? Yeah. See, that was the sweet side of you. The side that cared about me. That's what made me want to marry you. And that's why you can't live without me, huh? I have for a long time now. Now, don't start saying things like that. It's not true. Eddie, you're not there for us. I think your family should come first, not Lumpy just because he has tickets to some boat show. I'll call him and cancel. <laughs> he was coming by here tonight? Oh, Eddie! Hey, I didn't know how this was going to turn out. I know you're right. I've been impossible. Look, give me a month. If one little thing goes wrong, I'll throw myself out. Please. I don't know. Gertie. Gertie. Sweetums. Honey. Give me two weeks. A fortnight. How long is a fortnight? <laughs> it doesn't matter. You've got to give me a chance. What's that? It's our new couch. Oh, how about that? Our new couch. <laughs> sure brightens up the room. Go ahead, try it. Uh, no, no, not tonight. I just want to stand here and look at it for a while. Uh, you know me. I never even held Freddy for six, seven months after he was born. <laughs> oh, come on, you're being silly. Pretty comfy. Yeah, you just put the remote control right there. You're all set for the weekend. <laughs> and you want to know the best part? You didn't sell the waterbed, did you? Never. <laughs> this couch was reduced to $700. $700 for this slab of cement? Oh, so now it's a slab of cement. What happened to the guy who was begging for another chance? He just found out his wife blew the down payment on his Winnebago. Ed, you are the most selfish man who's ever lived. That's it, Gertrude. I thought I could be a different person for you, but I can't. This is the way I am, and if you don't like it, then I'm saddling up for good. Happy trails, Eddie. That's it, Gertrude. I'm leaving. I'm opening the door. I got one foot on the porch. I'm closing the door for the last time. So long, Chris. You're really not coming after me, are you? No. In that case, we can talk. <laughs> While I was outside, I had time to do a lot of thinking about what you said. 
Yeah, there, there might be something to it. Might be? I'm not promising you a personality transplant, but I guess I could spend a lot more time with you and Freddy and what's-his-name in military school. We'd all like that. And once in a while, you could buy something special for yourself, within reason. How about the couch? Can it be returned? All sales final. It's yours. Eddie, how about it? Are we going to the boat show or not? Eddie! Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> Boy, some best friend. my gratitude to the entire Cleaver clan for helping bring harmony to the Haskell home. Well, that's very nice, Freddy. Oh, please. It's the least I could do for all the pain you must have suffered during my father's <laughs> exile. Without a doubt, you Cleavers are greater humanitarians than Frank Sinatra himself. <laughs> Henry, there he is. There's the boy who ruined my flower bed. <laughs> I'd best be off. <laughs> 